Let's go ahead and get into the, the word. Uh, <clears throat> this should be this should be good. What we're going to do is go ahead and pick up in those scriptures in Isaiah that we've been studying, and they really, really bore the the uh, testimony of Jeremiah and already, and uh, and yet they were two different prophets at two different time periods, dealing with two different enemies, and uh, Isaiah is dealing with the Assyrians and ultimately the Assyrian captivity. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to Isaiah 8, and I'm going to go ahead and read part of the scriptures that we read before, uh, and, you know, with a little bit of emphasis, and then I want to, I want to uh, proceed a little differently. Okay, Isaiah 8, let's start at verse 7, which is where we did start, and we'll read down through verse four, 13 or 14, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> this is the Lord speaking through Isaiah to the king and to the people. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river strong and many, even the king of Assyria. So here, this is the, this is the one that's coming now. This is the new enemy. And, and he's coming with all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks, meaning he's going to cross borders. He's going to start taking land. He's going to start taking kingdoms. He's crossing all across these borders and like a flood because he's so, so big, so strong, so many. <clears throat> and um, verse 8, And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He's meaning he's going to run over the top of you. Uh, <clears throat> and he shall reach even unto the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel. Okay, and we dealt with Emmanuel uh, last time and the time before. <clears throat> um, and then verse 9. So this is the Lord. Uh, now he has, he has told um, Isaiah what's coming, and it ain't pretty. And uh, he has uh, he has spelled it out so that they know that this is going to be a strong thing, just like Jeremiah was telling um, Judah, you know, that that uh, the king of Babylon is coming, not just some little small king with his troops. <clears throat> and so this is the instructions that the Lord gives his people. Verse nine, beginning with verse nine. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, meaning he's talking to everybody here because they're going to start looking toward help just like um, uh, the king of Judah did toward Egypt. You remember that? Okay. Same scenario. It's just different people at a different time. Um, um, give ear all ye of far countries, gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. And then he says it again, gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. I had to, I had it in my notes and I re-looked at it and I went, mm, I must have done that twice. So I grabbed the old good old solid Bible, put it open. He said it twice. He said, if you gird yourself, if you start making yourself strong and you start getting yourself for war, you're going to be broken in pieces. <clears throat> and then he says, by the way, if you gird yourself and you start, he repeats it. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then the next verse is uh, 10 through whatever, however far we go, 13 or 14. <clears throat> it all has a whole lot to say about the use of the mouth. What are you going to do? Are you going to start using your mouth? Are you going to start uh, using it for this or that or whatever? And there's a whole bunch of of um, uh, words used. In fact, I, I wrote down a bunch of them. Counsel, speak, word, Lord spake, instructed, say ye not, say. So here we go. Verse 10. <clears throat> Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. And this isn't the word, the word of God here. This is starting to speak up and get help. <clears throat> um, and it shall not stand. 
for God is with us, or Emmanuel is the word that it used in the verses above this, which we didn't read for right now. Um, it shall not stand. Don't take counsel. Don't gird yourself. Don't start speaking to people. For God is with us. <clears throat> for the Lord spake thus to me, this is Isaiah speaking, to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not, now so he's talking to him to say this though, I should not walk in the ways of this people saying, say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. All right. So, uh, just going back over this. So, Isaiah is saying, don't do these things. Don't. Don't. Don't do this. This part. Don't do this. Don't associate yourselves by looking for soft counselors and flesh petters. People that will pet your flesh. Don't do it. Let's see. This is entering the corridor now. And when, the, when it starts getting hotter in here in the, uh, in the mid-zone, we start looking elsewhere instead of the Lord because we're so used to looking to the Lord to free us, to deliver us, to make everything, get us out of it, to, to help us, to, oh God, I know that's what you're for. You only exist to help me get, no, no, I made you to be in my image. I made you to have my spirit. I made you to be my people, to be with me, not as the Assyrians would do if they were being attacked by Babylon, which they were, and they fell to Babylon. Or Babylon was being attacked, and they would, they would seek help and all this stuff to, uh, to thwart the Persians, which they fell to the Persians, because that's what they do, is they do the exact opposite of what God wants us to do when we're in the corridor of suffering. He wants us, he wants to see that spirit in that nature. And maybe with the three Hebrew children, it was more like that, that there was a fourth man in the fire, but maybe that was the spirit that they were exuding of Christ. Maybe that's what was being seen and sensed. I don't know. Maybe not. <clears throat> All right. So uh, Isaiah says, don't guard yourselves doing things to strengthen yourself. Use the power, not the force, <laughs> use the power of willing weakness. It's a power. It's lamb power. It is. It's God's kind of power. Christ crucified, the wisdom and power of God. That's what it talks about in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Isaiah says, don't take counsel together to figure a way out of this. Isaiah says, don't get the word out about your mistreatment. Open not your mouth. If you stand up for yourselves by speaking, it shall not stand. Which is what he said. Isaiah says, don't join a confederacy to rise up against God's hand. That's what, that's what Nebuchadnezzar was called uh, in uh, the book of Jeremiah. God's hand. This wasn't, this wasn't the devil's hand. This isn't the devil's hand. The, the very first verses, let's see, uh, that I read when we started tonight, Isaiah 8, 7, Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up this flood, this Assyrian captivity. <clears throat> um, so, jo don't join a confederacy to rise up against God's hand. To do these things that I listed here, to do these things is to walk in the way of this people. And he said, don't walk in the way of this people. Don't do it. This is what everybody does. Don't be like them. Be my people. All right. So why not do these things? Why not assemble yourselves? Why not 
you know, uh, strengthen yourself, gird yourself with weapons and go fight back and everything. I mean, after all, they're evildoers. It's an evildoer. They're, they're uh, falsely accusing or, or, or attacking without a real reason. Um, so why not do these things? And he says, for God is with us. He says, Emmanuel. Okay. So, how do you carry out what God says? You carry it out in weakness. His nature. His spirit. We move from a warring spirit, which is ours. We move from a self-protecting, self-glorifying thinking that we, we need to, you know, we don't need to be destroyed here. We're really important to, I give up all and I trust you. And, that, and that's, that's what the bottom part of this is talking about, okay? Um, he says, um, so if you don't resort to this, meaning those that list that he said don't do. If you don't do those things, if you don't resort to that, it means you do not fear their fear, meaning the evildoers, in this case Assyria, in Jeremiah's case Babylon. It means you don't fear their fear, nor are you afraid, because these, the, these are the verses, why? Why do you not fear their fear and you would not be afraid? Because you have sanctified the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. That's the scripture, folks. That's the uh, uh, verse uh, 12, I guess it is. Um, 12 and 13. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. There it is. I mean, this is, okay. So we say, well, I'm not used to doing that. I don't really know how to do that. I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't really been trained probably or whatever. Well, if you've been around me any amount of time, you've been you've been trained enough on this, because the uh, because it's either Christ crucified or the Lamb of God or you know death is the answer, or whatever. But uh, so um, so now I want I'm excited to do this. I want to give some New Testament examples of what's been said here, so that we can see it in the New Testament. Okay. All right, you might want to jot down the, the, the scripture references that I give. That way you can go back and look a little closer to see, well, does this really match up with Isaiah 8, um, starting in verse 7? All right, here we go. First Peter 1, 5 through 12. <clears throat> So they were afraid, but Peter's talking about we're kept. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in this last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice now for a season, um, if indeed be, if need be, you are in heaviness or depression through manifold temptations wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that you're there, that the devil hates you. No, you're there, that because um, you, you sin. No, you're there, that because there's just mean people and that they're attacking you and they have no, you know, no, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, because it has to be tried with fire. 
before the, we'll ever really see the gold, he'll ever see the gold, if you will, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And we've talked about that appearing happening in, hey, this guy's leaning over, kissing her. Get away from him. This is a spiritual Bible school. Um, um, that the, the, the appearing is Christ being revealed in you. And so, see, now I, need a, now I need a cross inside of this guy. So we'll have to make one. <clears throat> that shows up that Christ has appeared, okay? Um, whom having not seen, you love, meaning, now this, and, and I think Dennis, uh, you mentioned to me one time, you know, well, this also has the practical application, and I totally agree with that. But Peter is definitely trying to bring out, and he's just starting, so he's laying the foundation of the physical practical so that he can develop that as he goes. So, um, uh, you love whom, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Here's the glory, and y'all remember that if we, in, in uh, First Peter class, the, the aspect of glory, <clears throat> receiving the end of your faith, meaning you, faith is not the end, Faith is to bring about a certain end, <clears throat> even the salvation of what? Can I hear y'all all say it together? His soul. Yeah, the soul. The soul. This isn't talking about, you know, uh, us being spiritually born again. This is talking about our soul with all of its craziness that goes on. <clears throat> um, uh, verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Well, we would go, we would say, um, uh, well, uh, you know, there's like five places in in this this particular prophetic book of the Bible where it literally mentions, well, it, it's full of this thing right here that we're talking about here. Jeremiah, um, Isaiah, we're going to get into Ezekiel big time, and we're going to see that all of that is about these testifying of the sufferings of Christ, and they wanted to see it. I want to see this. I want to be... I, want, I don't just want to hear it from you and then declare it to them. I want to experience this. I want to bring you glory. <clears throat> um, verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Under whom, meaning if you pass through this without doing all the don't do's these, you'll end up over here passing through that corridor of suffering and you will have brought great glory to God because he would have gotten out of you what he's after. It's his gold standard. And that's the nature of the lamb, the nature of Christ in trials without having to go kill your enemy or having to go get some people together and, 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 uh, and start bad-mouthing them so that we could say worse things about them so that I'll look better and they'll look worse and all this kind of stuff that we do instead of just saying, hey, you know, nail me to a cross. God will raise me, but he will not raise you if, if you don't have the spirit. <clears throat> all right, so... Uh, verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister these things. This is where we get to have that spirit. We are not just being attacked by Babylon or whatever, but in the, the attacks that, that are coming to us, we have Christ in us to be able to do that. <clears throat> um which things are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. And the angels will never be able to live according to this. You know, we say, well, the angels are perfect. Well, they, clearly they're not perfect because Satan fell and he took some, took some of those guys with him. So they're not perfect. 
but but God's not looking for perfection. He's looking for Christ. You say, well, he wants us all to be sinless and da 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 da. Well, but you're not, and neither am I. And show me the show me the person apart from Jesus that is. He's looking for Christ. He <laughs> If I can't get off on all this other stuff. I need to stick right here with all these, these scriptures that I want to go through. Okay. <clears throat> the stone which the builders disallowed, the same made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even unto them that stumble at the word, being disobedient. Okay, you know, where's that? That's We got that here in our... Ah. Okay. The next verse in, in Isaiah 8 that we've been reading, the very next verse says this, And he shall be for a sanctuary, but, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense um, to both the houses of Israel. He's, Peter is quoting the very scriptures that we've been talking about. Here now we already saw that he was quoting a bunch in in uh, Jeremiah too because of their exact quotes. Okay, all right. So um, let's go to let's go to another one. Let's go to let's see First Peter. <laughs> First Peter two, verses three through eight. Okay. Now keep in mind, Assyria is coming. The flood's coming. All this stuff is going to happen. All these bad things. And, and he's saying, don't assemble yourself. Don't open your mouth. Don't do this. Don't do these things. You're messing it up. You're totally ruining any chance to have, bring forth the gold for God's glory. <clears throat> All right, 1 Peter 2, 3 through 8. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, mm, just talked about it in Isaiah, uh, disallowed indeed of men, what does it mean disallowed of men? Hung on a cross for what? For nothing, for not doing anything against them, for being innocent, and yet the evildoer hung him on the cross, and yet he bore that for them and for us. <clears throat> Disallowed indeed, of, but chosen of God. Chosen to this. Chosen to this. And that's a big word in First Peter. Chosen and called and, and all of that. <clears throat> Probably up here somewhere. <laughs> um, uh, but chosen of God. Precious. Precious. This, is, this stuff. See, we always say, well, we really want to know what will bless God's heart. This will bless his heart. For you to have this spirit in the trials, in the things, to be with the Lamb, to be with that spirit and glorify the Father with the Son. It's precious to him. <clears throat> Verse 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You see, he's saying this isn't anymore about just killing lambs on an altar out here like Israel did. This is you letting the lamb lay down his life in you by that spirit you allowing that instead of resisting the very nature of Christ within you and and the and the the work that God did 2000 years ago on the cross as if that you know that's good as long as I get saved but you know so um uh to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So this is more right here than just praise and worship. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion. And when he says he lays it, he lays this, this lays him in the tomb. He's laying this at the cross. I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay, so this is talking about uh, uh, this stone that was disallowed. This stone that was disallowed. Okay, and that stone has become the chief cornerstone. It's not talking about him dying for sin. It's talking about him going through this in a certain spirit that was as gold to the Father. Okay. Um, I lay elect precious 
Uh, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. If you want a good search, go on that one. Confounded. I did. I started it in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, what is it, chapter 1. Uh, anyway, um, unto you therefore which believe, believe what? Believe in this spirit. Believe in going through things in this spirit. It, it, to those who believe, um, where am I? Even to them which, no, 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 where am I? Believe he is precious. But unto them that are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the ones who were the evildoers, the same is made the head of the corner. Okay, so he's saying, to us, to us, we see this spirit. We don't just have to look at the cross 2,000 years ago and go, oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, it's so good. We can look at it now in our circumstances. And we can have that. And we can say, "He, this spirit, this lamb, this, this Christ crucified is precious to me. And I don't, I, he's not going to be a rock of stumbling to me. See, and that's what that's exactly verse 14, Isaiah 8. He's talking about, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit next week. He's saying, but guys, if you if you do all this stuff I said do, that you assemble yourselves and you start girding yourself and you do all this stuff, then he is a rock of stumbling and a, a, a stone of offense. He is. And Peter chose those scriptures because he knew what they were talking about okay all right so verse 8 and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word what which word is he talking about is he talking about just the bible in general he's talking specifically about this area of all of our lives, every one of us have the opportunity to do this, to be with him, to take upon his the, the image of the Lord. It is done, it is not done by us, it's done through us. It is Christ crucified within us, it is the Lamb within us. But we have to come into agreement with that spirit, or we're just like every other sinner out there in the world and 90% of the Christians. I just want out of this. Just get me out of this, Lord. And that's all we pray, you know. What is, what is, uh, mm, what is it, Second Corinthians 4, the end of it there. He talks about um, uh, the, all this affliction and stuff. And he says, this, this light affliction worketh for us a far more eternal and more glorious weight of glory. Anyway, uh, and it's talking about this very same thing that, that this is talking about right here. But we pray, and it's, it's saying they work for us. These, this tribulation works for us. And so what do we do? We pray away our workers. At the same time, we pray them away in that, but then we turn around with our prayers and we pray... Um, um, Lord, I want your son. I want your image. I want, I, I really want him. I mean it. And then we get over here in this kind of, this, the corridor of suffering. And we start, oh, Lord, chase this stuff away. And uh, what is it Justice Scalia said? He said, you can't ride in the car with the cop at, while you're uh, supporting the criminals. Wait, Randy, are you saying I'm a criminal? If I'm, well, I'm saying you're going, you're, you're, you're saying, praying over here. Oh, I want your spirit. I want you. I want you in this way. I love you, Lamb of God. And then over here, any opportunity we get to allow him to really come forth, we go, Lord, I rebuke this stuff. Get it out of here in the name of the Lamb. <laughs> All right. Um Uh, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. We have been appointed. We have been called. We've been chosen. It's all through First Peter. And it all is relating to this ultimately, that we be able to, to enter into this, into our circumstances. All right. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go to 1 Peter, <laughs> chapter 1, verse 
chapter 2, verse 19 through 23. <clears throat> for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. What? It, can, you, can you hear um, uh, people listening to Jeremiah when the Babylonians are coming and he says, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's thankworthy. Uh, if a man for conscience towards God endures grief, suffers wrongfully, they would go, no way, man. They're the ones you need to suffer. Or Isaiah saying the same thing. No way, man. We need to gird ourselves. We need to get, we need to get a confederacy going here, a bunch of other people. We need to get our, our helper. We need to get our helper in here. See, see our helper. Um, he's get, you remember some of you might have missed it, but he's got a halo and and devil horns. When we're in the flesh and we want him to come help us, he's just a sweet angel. But when when uh, um, when we're uh, uh, with the Lord and we understand that he said, don't call these people, don't say, you know, this, uh, you know, call in these helpers, they, they're looked at as like a devil. In fact, I even added this little name to him here. It's a, he's a helper, H-E-L-L dash P-E-R, helper, so. What do you think? All right, this is yours, buddy. <clears throat> All right. First Peter 2, 19 through 23. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. But if, it, if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Meaning, if you, we didn't do anything wrong, why is this, you know, I mean, can you hear uh, Israel under Isaiah? We didn't do anything wrong. This guy's just attacking us wrong. And God, God doesn't allow unfair things like that to happen. That's unjust. We need to get our swords and, and go cut off his horns. Or whatever. Peter cut off the guy's ear. Peter knows what he's talking about. Of this stuff. He was like the big example to us. You know, our good thing, Jesus, I got this. And Jesus said, it's enough. You know, I still think he didn't say, yeah, two swords, that's great. This should do the trick. I think he was like really maybe kind of going, Peter, it's enough. Dude, just, you know. And then he reaches out and cuts off Malchus's ear, and Jesus doesn't go, See, dude, you shouldn't have been with this group coming to attack me because I didn't do anything wrong and I'm of God and you shouldn't. Have. Instead of talking to Malchus and rebuking him, he turns to Peter and says, put that sword away. If you're going to live by that, you'll die by that. Jesus will, you know, if, you're, if you belong to Jesus, he's going to rebuke you over some of these things after a while. He might even use me. I don't know. Like right now. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, um, if, and you, you, if you take it patiently, but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here unto were you called, chosen. Uh, uh, what was the other word that I had that was in the last scripture? Anyway, appointed. Uh, this is it. Th you say, that's not my calling. I'm, I'm called to, you know, I'm called to little kids, you know, the little toddlers. I just love on them. I kiss their little faces and change their diapers during children's church. And, you know, good, do that. But this is what you're called to when it comes to the life of Christ. This is the eternal calling. You're not going to be doing that in heaven. Some of you are going, yay. <laughs> Some of you moms got so, been through several kids already. You're just going, thank God for that one. 
<clears throat> All right. Um, this, uh, for even hereunto are you called because Christ. So he didn't say, because this is the thing, uh, this is uh, our calling, uh, or uh, this is the thing that we do. He says, for Christ also suffered. He's, he's holding Jesus Christ and him crucified as the standard. He's, he's holding him up. He's, it's, there's the gold standard. He, he, you know, he let the fire bring forth the gold that was his nature. And he's saying, he's not saying this is the right thing to do. This is the randy thing to do. This is the, you know, uh, this is the, the good thing to do um, uh, in, the, in the one big circumstance that happens in your life. Even so, Christ, because Christ also suffered for us, for us and that's the end of it as long as Jesus died for us then that's fine we don't have to have that same spirit and do it for anybody else or do it for God he doesn't require that he died so we wouldn't have to die no 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 always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that's what it says so then death worketh in me yes he he, he abolished death in relationship to dying and going to hell if you're born again but that's not the end of it <clears throat> okay so even here until you call because christ also suffered for us leaving us as an ex uh, leaving us an example that proves that this whole thing right here if you if you if you took this chart and over here you just and i really do need a a, a jesus will that stick no Okay, if I had Jesus over here, and I didn't have us or anything else, and I just used this corridor example of what Jesus went through, and Jesus did get in that corridor, and he sweat great drops of blood, and he said, Father, if it be your will, let this pass. But then he got up, and he went through it, and you didn't hear anything along that line after that. He was with the Father, and that's what he was going to do. So it just shows, yeah, you know, there's, do you know the word trepidation? <laughs> there's some trepidation going into this. Um, and as I said, you know, you may fail. You may fail a bunch, but eventually, if that's your heart, Christ will be formed in you in this way. Anyway, Christ didn't do this so we wouldn't have to. This says he did it as an example for us to follow in his steps in this way. That's the point. That's the point. Okay. So, who did no sin, and here's what that, that means. We say, well, yeah, that's right. Jesus never sinned. <clears throat> um, um, you know, he... You know, when he walked the earth and he did all, he never sinned. He was sinless. And that, because he was a sinless man, God honored. The, this is not, this is staying in the context of this. The fact that who did no sin, meaning he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't rail back. And, you know, we're going to get to that in this same verse. So he's going to describe the exact sins he's talking about. Okay. Who did no sin. Neither was, here we go, neither was guile found in his mouth. Remember uh, Isaiah, remember Jeremiah, what they said, what the Lord always said to him started, it always had to do with the mouth also. Um, no guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Folks, all of that is not anything that happened prior to, to Jesus entering the corridor when he was going through when he was facing crucifixion and in crucifixion and the, the judgment that was coming there. So all that this whole thing could be pictured, could be taken down and redone to show Christ going through this. All right? 
and and you get it right here you just get it in words you don't get the picture of it but this is no guile uh, not using his mouth um, when reviled he didn't revile back he suffered but he didn't threaten um, he committed himself to him that judges righteously okay so we say well these evil doers are coming against me and look at him look he's got a big old red belly button and he's mean and he's, you know, he's attacking me. And, and uh, Lord, judge, judge between me and him. You know, let me show you me and him. See what he looks like in me? I'm just an innocent bystander. Judge righteously and, and take this away. And the Lord's like, um, okay, I... I didn't, I didn't sin by doing any of the things that you would do in the corridor. Um, uh, I didn't revile back. I didn't use my mouth. I didn't, uh, when I suffered, I didn't threaten. But I committed myself to him that judgeth righteously, not in some sort of context that he'll really get them and they won't succeed and I will, uh, I, somehow God will miraculously save me from being in the image of the Lamb. No, we wouldn't say it like that. God would miraculously save me from heaven. No, he's up there going, I'm judging righteously right now, and you are so out of whack with me, you're stumbling at that great stumbling stone, which is, which is Christ that was, um, uh, what was the word it used for, for him being slain? Um, rejected or it was another word disallowed disallowed well that word that doesn't really say it does it he was disallowed of men all right gosh oh did i didn't i do five minutes of uh I, i've got a shorter one here but there's a shorter one the next one um but but Maybe we're, we're repeating here, and that would be good, okay? 1 Peter 3, verse 8 through 12. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. Let's see if this says the same thing and it's going through the same thing. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Well, so far, the one mind he's been talking about is the mind of going through this and trusting in our Adonai and letting uh, not not using our resources even if all our resource the only resource i have is to say bad things uh, about the evildoer to my helper that's still a resource that's my resource that's not committing yourself to god who judges righteousness one mind finally be ye all of one mind having compassion one on another Love is brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. See, that in chapter 2, he said the same thing. And he said it about this, kind, this corridor type thing, this sufferings of Christ thing, and trusting Adonai in that. And so now in chapter 3, he's still coming back to reinforce it, not railing, not evil for re evil or railing for ra railing, but contrarywise, blessing. In other words, we haven't had that in, in the verses we've been reading right here, but blessing those who despitefully use you, blessing those who curse you. Uh, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This is, this is a huge part of the spirit and nature of Christ. You say, well, I can wait patiently and not use my resources or call on anybody else, but God's going to get you. You know what? That's not your business. That's none of your business. It's none of my business. It's not. That's God's business. 
to his own master, he will rise or fall. That is not yours or mine. You, you say, well, you're talking kind of firm. God talked to me firmly and told me when I was in the court or many times have been in there. And he said, this is none of your business. Your business is to trust your Adonai and, and uh, your business is not to make the issue about them. This is not an issue about them to me. Why is it an issue about them to you? The only issue is that you have the spirit of my son. And I told through him to you to bless those who curse you, to do good to those who da 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 da, to, you know, pray for all of those things. They're, they're important to the nature of the, the, this issue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that you are called, thereunto called, here we go, called. Do you see how it keeps coming up? But it's always called to the same thing, okay? <clears throat> um, they're in call that you should inherit a blessing, okay? He didn't say, if you are wrongly treated and you don't ra rail back, but you still don't bless them and you, your heart's not pure yet, then um, I'll, I'm going to bless you anyway. No, he said there's a full, there's a full uh, fullness of what is expected in that corridor that your Adonai expects in that corridor, and he will not change. And and Jesus was the example. You know, <clears throat> okay. So, um, verse ten, for. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto the prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Meaning that do the same thing this guy is doing. Talking about him, trying to get people to go against him, planning your war scheme, all this kind of stuff, <clears throat> or, or going into self-pity and trying to get people to, you know, be your hell, helper, all of that. <clears throat> By the way, from verse um, 10 all the way down through verse 12, that's basically a quote from one of the Psalms of David, who was in the corridor. Okay. Now, if you... If we should ever wander back to First Peter, we would see that so clearly that so many of the verses that I'm quoting right now, they come from the prophets, which he said in the beginning, the prophets wanted to look into and God's showing us this and we're getting to be a part of it. And, all right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna stop. Um, and we've got, we've got a few more to go. And the, I do actually have some in here that are not out of First Peter, but I thought that we would do these in First Peter now because I have been um, uh, sharing Jeremiah and his situation with Babylon and trying to deal with Israel, who is not... I ain't buying this, you know, not Israel, but Judah. Judah, I'm not buying this to, to Jeremiah. You know, no, that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to protect ourselves. God wants us this and that and da da da. Well, I'm sure there's situations that he does, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about this right here. And he definitely doesn't want you to. Um, and, um, and, and then uh, getting into Isaiah. And we, as I said, we'll get into Ezekiel. But I felt like at this time, because Isaiah's was so concise, yet so clear, and after gone through the, all of the Jeremiah stuff, that maybe our minds are ready to realize. And I want to tell you, um, I didn't, I didn't plan all of this. I didn't plan this to get us 
you know, to, t to teach us 1 Peter because we couldn't get it in 1 Peter here. I was taken there by God at such a roundabout way in Genesis um, 18 with Abraham running up and, and I had a completely different spirit like he'd been through the corridor or something. And he just fell down and he worshiped God and then what do you want to eat? And I'll go get it. And he runs and gets it and all this. And he's just, he's just, everything is about him. God doesn't even say anything. Abraham is just finding out what it was that he wants. And then I made that big mistake about um, uh, thinking that the name there that Abraham called him was Elohim. And it was Adonai. And I knew nothing of that. And it plunged me because I wanted to know, Lord, why is this? Because I didn't, I didn't know what he's shown me now. And it, it rushed me into the study that we went through. And then we went through the Psalms and we saw it. And then, then we're going through the prophets. But you see, this, all, this whole search isn't just about Adonai, although this is totally all Adonai stuff. It's not just First Peter stuff, although it's perfectly First Peter stuff. I didn't know that. I didn't figure this out and go, hmm, yeah, I'll just do this and this will get us, to, get us there. The Lord did this and, and he was showing me I was learning at the same time. And, um, but I'm telling you, because, I, see, I know that I didn't work anything in this and that I'm as shocked as, as y'all might be in one sense. I know that, but you may not know or you may not fully realize that God didn't let us up from first Peter and God didn't want us to miss something so important about Abraham's behavior before God in chapter 18 of Genesis that was like he was like nothing he had been like before where he was he'd learned the name but he used him as his, you know, like, well, you're the boss, so I want you to go do this. And, and, you know, why haven't you done this and that and all that? All of that was there in Abraham. And it was an abomination to God. But then circumcision came along. And then the very next verse, in the very next chapter, Adonai. And then you see in Abraham this glorious, beautiful heart towards God that he never really manifests until that time. Anyway, and I'm saying that to let you know that this, this, is, this is on God's heart. This, all this stuff is on God's heart. It's not just me, I promise you. In fact, it's not me. And um, so I, I pray for us. Pray for me. I pray for you. Pray for us. And um, I so am moved deeply that he didn't give up on us in First Peter because it's some of the best stuff. I told the class that was in there, this will be some of the best stuff you'll ever see in the Word of God. And he's bringing us around for a whole different way. But so maybe, maybe I, we may not need to go back after some of this stuff, but but maybe he'll take us back and let us look a little closer sometime. All right. Well, let's pray. Father, I just, um, I feel so inadequate most of the time, but I am animated by what I see to be your heart wanting us, reaching out to us to get these things that are important to you, to transform us from Abraham before chapter 18 to Abraham at chapter 18. That first part of how wonderfully he was only mindful of you Father, I even 
even tonight as I was preparing, I was made aware that I, I pray so much for our people. And I turned my prayer and I said, Father, that you would get something out of this, that you through us would gain something glorious of your Son. Father, I, I ask that eternally. And I ask it for us. And I ask it not in any of our own righteousness or name, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Bless you. Be blessed. Always be blessed. Keep seeking Him. Keep putting Him first. He's worth it. <laughs> Bye-bye.